If you've got chronic digestive issues and have lost hope, I can relate because I was there for a long time. I tried almost everything with no success, so I know what it feels like. But today, I'll share with you how I eventually managed to fix it. So I'll explain five steps you can take which might be able to help you fix the problem. But first, I'll let you in on a little secret. 10 years ago, I went backpacking through India and this trip lasted nine months. You might have heard the term deli belly, and I was one of the unfortunate guys who had it basically for the whole time I was there. I developed Giardia at one point, which was really nasty, and probably multiple other gut infections. And even then, after I arrived back into the UK, my symptoms still persisted. And although it improved slightly, I was left with some pretty severe digestive issues. After some investigation, I was eventually diagnosed with a condition called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. This is very similar to IBS. So over time, I developed strategies to deal with this one of those was the ketogenic diet, but whenever I went off the diet, my symptoms would return. So I hadn't fixed the problem, I was just managing the symptoms. Over the following years, I tried many different approaches, which you can see on the right hand side of the screen. Unfortunately, none of them worked until I addressed or fixed the underlying root cause. I then started applying these principles in hundreds of other clients and they also saw benefits as well. So now let's get into what you can actually do about it. Despite what a lot of people might tell you, I do not advise that you willy nilly go about killing off gut microbes. I tried to do this, I was stuck in a cycle of trying multiple different herbs and antibiotics and things like that, and it didn't work. In fact, uh, in some cases, if it's done at the wrong time, then it can make someone feel worse. The first step that you should do, and it seems really obvious, but some people don't know, is give your gut a rest from any irritants and fermentable fibers. As long as you've got dysbiosis and an overgrowth of bacteria in the upper gut, these foods are going to cause you a problem. So at the very least, you need to be doing a low FODMAP diet, even better would be a specific carbohydrate diet or even a carnivore diet. Again, this is temporary, but you need to do it. On the topic of gut irritants, this means any artificial flavors or other types of ingredients, gums and things. But for me, it was oxalates. In fact, reducing oxalates greatly helped my gut in the early stages. Whilst you're doing this, another really effective tool that you could be using is fasting. This means going 12, 14, or even 16 hours every day completely in a fasted state. The reason for this is, is because the gut, when it's not busy digesting food, it's actually getting to work repairing and clearing out waste. We have something called the migrating motor complex. This only kicks into gear when you're not digesting food. So in terms of repair, in terms of clearing out any excess bacteria that, that are stuck in the upper small intestine, it's a really good idea to try to implement some kind of a fasting regime. Now the next step is perhaps the most important yet overlooked cause of SIBO. It's what barely anyone focuses on and doesn't really understand and yet it was the only thing which fixed my gut. This was fixing gut motility. And let me just be clear, I'm not talking about using a laxative. That's not fixing it, that's using a band-aid. There's a key difference. I'm talking about giving the body the tools it needs to do it itself. One of the most common reasons for SIBO and IBS is poor gut motility. Now, if there's poor communication from the brain to the gut via something called the vagus nerve, then the right signals are not sent to the gut and the gut doesn't know what to do and when. In other words, it doesn't propel food, you can't make stomach acid, you can't make pancreatic enzymes, and you can't make enough immune cells or mucus to protect the gut barrier. All of these things are functions of the vagus nerve, which is a component of the parasympathetic nervous system. So for the gut to work, the vagus nerve needs to work. In this way, SIBO is a symptom of autonomic nervous system imbalance. If you have sympathetic overdrive and you don't have enough parasympathetic activity, then you are not gonna fix your gut problems. Like, simple, you will not fix them. So if you think this might apply to you, then a really good way to measure this is by looking at a metric called heart rate variability. Fortunately, this is something which is available on most of the health tracking devices which are sold today. Back when I had severe IBS, I was using the Aura Ring and my HRV was in the low 20s, which is pretty terrible. The only way I fixed my gut was getting my HRV up into the late 50s and 60s this was basically a way of knowing that my body could get into parasympathetic mode much better than it previously could. So you might be wondering, how do you actually do this? Well, avoiding stress is pretty obvious. Basic relaxation or breathing exercises can also really help in the long term, along with meditation. Likewise, regular cardiovascular exercise can also help, but I know that's not available to everyone. 
Now, perhaps the most important determinant is maintaining a robust circadian rhythm. So this should really be top priority. But another reason for low HRV, and this was applicable in my case since I was doing all that stuff already, was nutritional deficiencies. I used two nutrients in particular, which both activate the vagus nerve by increasing the levels of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. The number one top priority is thiamine, otherwise known as vitamin B1. It was known as early as the 1940s that one of the first signs of a nutritional deficiency of thiamine were SIBO-related symptoms, so bloating, gas, constipation, um, acid reflux, etc. From a clinical perspective, the best form is TTFD. However, another form called benfotiamine or sorbutiamine can also be effective for some people. The next nutrient is a precursor for acetylcholine, and this is called CDP-choline, or you could use another form called alpha-GPC. Much later on, I started using a third nutrient, which I also found useful, is called vitamin B5 or pantothenic acid. It works in a similar way to the former two, and there is some Japanese research which shows it directly acts on the gut to increase propulsion and digestive secretion. In many cases, these three nutrients alone will be enough to fix SIBO. You might be surprised because you probably never heard of them. Again, they never fail to amaze me in how effective they can be alone without having to do any antibiotics, without antimicrobials. But if you're in the business of improving your parasympathetic tone and autonomic nervous system balance, then there's also another really effective tool. This is called sauna. In fact, after you use a sauna, there is a rebound effect on the parasympathetic nervous system, and this lasts for several days afterwards. In fact, coming out of Japan, there are several studies specifically looking at the far infrared sauna and its effects on increasing parasympathetic tone. And this ultimately leads us to the sponsor of this video, a company called Bon Charge. So these guys sent me this sauna blanket several months ago, and honestly, I'm super impressed. Uh, I've been using it like almost every single day. In this context specifically, you know, the aim is to improve parasympathetic nervous system, improve the vagus nerve. Well, research actually shows that regular sauna can do this and not many things can do that. So this is awesome. On top of that, you also get the benefit of detoxing stuff through the skin, which takes a bit of the burden off of the liver. And if you have problems making bile or anything like that, then ultimately anything which helps the liver do its job is gonna be beneficial for digestion and ultimately detoxification. Secondly, what I also like about this thing is that it's low EMF. And so that's one of the issues when you get uh, portable saunas, usually they outgas a bunch of chemicals, which this doesn't as well, but they also really high EMF. So as you know, I don't really do promotions for other companies, but I really like this one and I like this product. So that's why I'm doing it. Uh, if you want to grab one of these, you can actually get a 15% discount using the uh, link in the description below and the discount code EON. So EON, click the link below and you get 15% off. So it's awesome. However, if these recommendations do not work, then you're gonna need to take it one step further. And in that case, you're gonna really wanna focus on improving digestive output because one of the main drivers of SIBO in the first place is when your stomach can't make enough stomach acid, for instance, that has an antimicrobial effect. Or if you're not making enough bile or if your bile flow is sluggish, bile also has an antimicrobial effect as well. So you're gonna to wanna to at least give some temporary support to these organs. So some basic recommendations are trying apple cider vinegar. This is really good for uh, laying the foundations for digestion in the stomach, you take a tablespoon with a small shot glass of water five minutes before a meal. If it's really bad, you definitely have low stomach acid, then you can try betaine HCL. This should only be temporary, but it should come in handy, particularly for the next stage. Another suggestion is digestive bitters. There are lots of different options available. Taking this five minutes before a meal as well. These prep the entire digestive system, not only the stomach, but also give the input to the liver and the gallbladder to start making and releasing bile into the upper small intestine. I personally didn't need these, but I found that many people do benefit from pan pancreatic enzymes. And if someone has sluggish liver or a sluggish gallbladder, then taking some kind of bile support is also gonna be necessary. This can be tugka or it can be bile salts such as ox bile. So at this point, I'm gonna assume that you are on a semi-restrictive diet at least. You are doing the things that you can to improve the parasympathetic nervous system and trying to improve HRV. You are also supporting your digestion in every way possible, um, and yet you're still noticing symptoms. Chances are you do have residual overgrowth. It can be persistent, 
and it is at this point and this point only that you would then focus on using some kind of an antimicrobial therapy. Let me be clear, I am not going to explain detailed protocols on how to do this. There are countless examples online, they do it much better than I can, and I will link to several examples in the description below. What I will say is this, there is no cookie cutter approach. What that means is, is that depending on the type of overgrowth, it will determine the type of antimicrobial supplement that you are using. I'll give you an example, if it's hydrogen dominant, if it's hydrogen sulfide dominant, or if it's methane dominant, they're all gonna respond to different things. Another thing which can be indispensable in this journey is leveraging the power of bacteria to do the job for you. There are some beneficial probiotics which make their own antibiotic substances. These are way more powerful than any of the herbs that you're going to give. So ultimately, um, if you can use the right types of bacteria in the right setting, these can do wonders for clearing an overgrowth in the upper small intestine. An extremely useful spore-based probiotic that I found very helpful was Bacillus coagulans, although I know many of the Bacillus spores can also be helpful. Another potentially useful addition which I've been using in other clients in recent years is Lactobacillus ruteri yogurt. But suffice to say, if you're going to try the probiotics, then you're gonna to wanna to take them away from any kind of antimicrobial therapy that you're doing. Whether that's antimicrobial herbs or antibiotics, try and take them away, so a couple of hours on either side. So now at this stage, let's say that you've identified some kind of a protocol, you've initiated it, maybe you've done a month of antimicrobials, and you should ideally be relatively symptom-free at this point. Now, in that case, what you're gonna to wanna to do is start giving the gut the right materials to repair and heal itself. So for this, I like to recommend a good quality colostrum. If you can't tolerate dairy, then here is where serum derived immunoglobulin can come in very ha handy. The dose would be uh, two to three grams per day if possible. Secondly, butyrate, which is a short chain fatty acid. You can use either sodium butyrate, calcium magnesium butyrate, or alternatively, there is another more bioavailable form called tributyrin. The dose of standard butyric acid is anywhere from one to three grams per day. Now you can also obtain this from butter. However, I would caution against doing that if you have problems digesting fat, given the fact that to reach an effective dose, you need about 100 grams of butter per day. And last but not least, there is another very interesting molecule called lactoferrin, and it can be used in a dose between 200 and 400 milligrams per day. Together, this combination of nutrients can very much help to clear any residual inflammation and get rid of unwanted debris from the upper gut. Now, if you're one of the few people who this did not work for, then chances are you have not identified the root cause. You have some kind of an autonomic nervous system dysfunction, perhaps, and it's caused by something external. It could be mold or it could be a stealth infection. It could be that you have a thyroid condition, for instance. You need to identify those root causes before you can go one step further. I'd also like to mention that these steps are not set in stone. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you've probably already tried a couple of these things. I would caution against using antimicrobials first of all because they can cause more problems than they help. However, for some people they might respond wonderfully to that.